G'day folks, it's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today we're going to play a little bit with Windows Operating System. And today we're going to look at the Windows Defender Firewall. I'm going to block an IP. Now there's a lot of reasons why I've done this in the past. I'm not going to get into all of them, but a good example. Baselining, troubleshooting, something is talking to something that it's not supposed to be because of a misconfiguration, because of an old drive mapping, because of an old config, or what, it doesn't matter. But I want to test it. So the easiest way to test it is if I can block that client's IP for a bit, see what happens, then we can properly troubleshoot the rest of the issue. So let's run through it real quick. I've got my famous little HTTP portable file server from HFS. Uh, I've already written about this a million times. I'll put uh, a link in the notes. And this is the web browser from the other machine. So if I just hit refresh, on the other machine, on my machine, you can see the get request went through, right? So get and this other command. I'll hit it again, refresh, and we see two. So there's our baseline, right? So we get two every single time. Everything works fine. You can see the page loads with the files and all that good stuff. Now I would like to block this remote computer from accessing mine. And this remote computer's IP address is 10.44.10.5. That's what we're going to block. So let's go to Windows Defender here. I'm going to right click on inbound rules, new rule, and I want to do a custom rule type. But you, as you can see here, there's, there's a lot of control. You can play with all the rest of them. Program, all programs. Again, I'm going to make this a generic thing. Now, here's something you got to pay attention to. If you are going to test using ICMP, you have to mess around down here, ICMP. We are using TCP, so this will be just fine. So I'm going to hit next. So I haven't changed anything yet. Which remote IP address does this rule apply to? These addresses, add 10.44, 10.5. Okay, that's it, that's all I did. Next, block the connection or allow the connection, but we're blocking it. So now 10.44, 10.5 will not be able to access my machine. Next, this is tricky. Uh, I'm not on a domain in this example, so I'm going to uncheck that. In some cases, it doesn't matter what you check, but I've also seen situations where that domain checkbox messes you up if you're not on a domain. So just as a habit, more than anything, I don't check off domain if I'm not in a domain. Next, and give it a name, block dot five. There you go, done. So now it's loaded, it's blocked, okay? I'm going to right click and clear my screen so I don't have to pay attention to too many details. And then I'm going to just refresh. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm on the remote machine, refresh. And as you see, nothing is coming up. And this is spinning, right? It's spinning. Here, I'll move it right over so you can see it really good. Spinning, trying to access. Nothing is popping up on this screen. Nothing. All right. So if I want to see if it actually does anything, I'm just going to go back to my block. I'll disable the rule. Hit refresh again, and you'll see, and there it is. See that? So simply by, I'll, I'll enable it again, enable rule, clear my screen, refresh. And you can see in this case, I'm getting the get commands from the remote device, but I'm not sending anything back. You see that? So I'm hearing the, the request come in, but I'm not sending anything back because of that rule. That's it, folks. Now, there's there's a ton of ways to do this through PowerShell. Some people have text files they'd like to um, upload to the machine of, you know, GOIP ranges and stuff like that. This is it at its basic premise, and you can take it from here to wherever you'd like to go. Have a great day. Bye for now.